The NWB van on the road was provided by the Pepsi Corporation. The NWB van was painted by Cookson's Collision Center, Palmyra Skowhegan, with paint provided by Auto Paint Supply. All lettering done by Final Vinyl. This broadcast is sponsored by A.E. Robinson Oil Company Incorporated, Palmyra Golf Club, and Gilman's Plumbing and Heating. Comus Warrior Broadcasting, in association with Arbor Shoe 19, presents the 2017 Military Ball. And Hammer, Miss Netto, distinguished guests, veterans, friends and families, cadets and guests. Welcome to the 2017 Nokomis Warrior Battalion, Battalion Military Ball. This event is a special opportunity to come together as a team in a formal setting to recognize both individual achievements and achievements of the Corps as a whole. In 1916, JRTC was established across the nation and we currently have approximately 1,500 programs across the country. Our program here at Nokomis was established 23 years ago and we are one of the five Army JRTC programs across the great state of Maine. The program here at Nokomis is one of the largest student-run organizations within the school with roughly one out of every six students involved with the program. We now have one of the largest JRTC programs across Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont and are very proud of their accomplishments. The mission of JRTC is to motivate young people to become better citizens. Please direct your attention to the Sabre team commanded by Cadet Josh Grozik as we welcome the graduating seniors of Class 2017. Cadet Command Sergeant Major Zach Ellis, accompanied by his mother. <laughs> Cadet Major Taylor Harris, accompanied by her brother. Cadet Major Charlie Pinkerton, accompanied by his sister. Cadet Captain Colby Watson, accompanied by Harley Gagne. Cadet Captain Angela Fassione, accompanied by Laura Freudenberger. Cadet Second Lieutenant Jacob Lindsay. <laughs> Cadet 
and your host for the Nokomis Warrior Battalion Military Ball, the Battalion Commander, Cadet, Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Kaylee Mackey, accompanied by a man who requires no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the posting of the colors and the singing of the national anthem sung by Laura Freudenberger. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Please be seated. It is my distinct pleasure to now introduce the head of the Warrior Nation, Ms. Mary Netto, an invaluable supporter of the JRTC program. Good evening and welcome to our annual JROTC Ball. I can't tell you what an honor it is to have such an outstanding organization 
part of our school. And if you listen to James' remarks, you know, we're one of uh, the few JROTC programs in the state of Maine, but in my opinion, we are absolutely the best. Uh, last year, uh, Sergeant Major Moulton uh, was new to Nokomis, and we uh, participated in the Veterans Day Parade, and it's quite a show when Nokomis goes. We have a large music program, as you know, and the ROTC went, and I remember talking to Eric Tuesday after, and I said, you know, how did it go? Did you enjoy it? And he said, Mary, we rolled deep. And I thought, yes, we do, Eric, we roll deep. And we roll deep not just in numbers, we roll deep in our pride. Pride in our community, pride in our school, and pride in each other. You know, I can't tell you the service this organization provides to our school. And I know many of you see them at many of our formal public events. I can't think of an event this school holds that the Nokomis JROTC doesn't support and isn't an integral part. But what you probably don't see are the many informal ways our cadets give service to our school and their fellow classmates and to the adults here in the building on a daily basis. They are at the ready for anything and everything we ask of them. They are regularly helping their classmates, whether it's extra help or just giving a hand, moving some items or just being a positive presence in our school. And I can't tell you the impact that has on the climate of our school. And so I give my heartfelt thanks to those students who have a tremendously busy schedule and they come at the ready every day. And we certainly do roll deep with Nokomis JROTC. I'd like to give my thanks to Sergeant Major Eric Moulton and Lieutenant, or excuse me, Colonel, Brian Clark, their leadership has been tremendous and I've seen them take their early years here at Nokomis. They've honored the traditions that Nokomis JROTC has built, but they've taken this program to new heights. And I don't know uh, if any of you are aware of what the Summit Project is, but I think it's just a tremendous project where our cadets take a stone of a fallen hero, a fallen veteran, and carry it to a summit top and hike the mountain. And I just, I find that so inspirational and meaningful. And I know they've built a great, re a great relationship with Maine Maritime Academy this year and our cadets have had some really cool opportunities to get involved with some scuba diving and uh, to spend a night on the state of Maine, uh, Maine, Maine Maritime Academy's ship. And so they're just building some incredible opportunities for our cadets to really become career and college ready. Um, but I'm so proud of you, and there's quite an impressive array of awards that are going to be presented tonight. So congratulations to all those um, students who will be recognized this evening. Thank you so much for joining us, and enjoy your night. Thank you. Ms. Neto, thank you for, your, for those remarks, and we look forward to your continued support in the future. Now please look in your napkin, and if you find a paper, you win the centerpiece and a glass. Anyone? Okay. We will now begin the dinner portion of the evening, and I will start having tables cycle through the buffet line. We will start with the head table. And due to the fact that there is more attendance than expected, if you choose to get seconds, please wait until everyone has gone up and received the plate. Way, if you look at the centerpiece, this is all uh, hard work that Colby did on his own time with his own guidance to make an arch, make a chandelier. So please give him a, a round of applause. So if we go back in time and we start off with uh, the end of last school year, 
I took a crew of four cadets down to Washington, D.C. on a fully funded uh, competition, the JRHC Leadership and Academic Bowl, where they placed first, they placed tied for first in New England. So about 150 schools, they tied for first, which earned them the right, earned them the privilege to go to Washington, D.C. and compete, in essence, internationally. So if you think about the memories that they created, the opportunity that they had to go down to Washington, D.C. and compete nationally, to visit the Arlington Cemetery, to visit other uh, historic sites in Washington, D.C., truly awesome experience for those four individuals. And as I think of the memories you truly make in high school by doing things outside of the classroom, I have one specific memory. As we were getting on the subway, the first time all four of them had ever been on a subway. And I kind of gave them a real quick brief. Hey, this is where we're going. This is how the subway works. Subway pulls up, opens the door. A mass of humanity in Washington, D.C. trying to get into the subway. And the door starts closing. And I see two of my cadets fighting for their lives, trying to make their way through the mass of humanity. But the subway driver didn't care. And the doors kept on closing. And I just watched their faces smushed up against the window as, as I was on with another one. And we went on to our destination. And I was like, wow, I hope they know where they're going. Uh, but they did. And we found them there. So that was truly an awesome opportunity. Taylor Harris, uh, she's going back down to DC this summer. Again, fully funded, one of eight students nationally that gets the opportunity to this time assist in that academic bowl, that leadership bowl, just from her. Uh, placing first last year. So awesome experience uh, at the JLab. As we rolled into September, one of the things we wanted to do was summon a mountain on 9-11. Summon a mountain on 9-11. This year happened to fall on a Sunday. So we asked the staff, hey, who wants to climb a mountain? And not only climb a mountain, but I want you to carry an American flag. And I want you to create a flagpole, build a flagpole, that we're going to fly on the summit of whatever mountain we climb. Who's in? Bunch of hands went up, and I looked at Colby Watson. So Colby, make us a flagpole. And as we'll see in this uh, short little video here shortly, Colby made a flagpole out of PVC pipe, probably close to the ceiling in height. And we, we schlepped up the mountain in pouring rain, uh, wind ripping on the summit. So the flags were ripping. The, uh, the rain was coming down hard. You couldn't see but 10 feet in front. And you'll see some of the photos of us up on the summit and, and socked in with, so with fog. But I would bet no other school in Maine was on a mountaintop on 9-11. I would bet no other school in the nation climbed a mountain on 9-11 in remembrance of that day and had those discussions as you're walking up the trail talking about, hey, what do you remember about 9-11? Instead of sitting in a classroom and talking about it, carrying the American flag to the summit and talking about it and having those good discussions about 9-11 and why we remember. So then we transition into drill season and we'll see some photos of the drill team. We partic participate in events at University of Maine. Again, the, the, the intent is to get the students on a college campus. If they walk the halls of a college campus, maybe they'll say, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. And they competed at the University of Maine in the field house. At the end of the season, they ended up tying for second with all the schools in New England. So great job from all the uh, individuals from the drill team here. And we'll see some photos. We transition into roughly October. And we do a uh, event that they've probably been doing for decades called Stuff the Cupboards, where they raise or they do like a food drive across the school to raise food historically to give to local food pantries for, for individuals in need. Uh, there's a teacher here, Miss Olson, who came up with the awesome idea, hey, we really have a, a demand here in the high school. Can we really help out those individuals here in our high school, here in our walls, and can we divert some of that food to those individuals? And with her uh, drive, that started happening this year where we took much of the food raised and collected, and we're starting to, or she's starting to, perhaps put together like a Nokomis food bank. But we take care of our own, we take care of our own, and ensure they are fed and they're nourished during that holiday Thanksgiving season and Christmas, et cetera. So great effort there. Then we transitioned into where they do the giving tree. And again, probably something that's been done for decades, where they synchronize the collection of gifts across 
in essence, the high school, but individuals from outside the high school uh, present presents as well. So they collected enough presents to support roughly 150 children within the district. So those children would not, they would have woken up on Christmas, perhaps with nothing under the tree, but instead 150 children, due to efforts from individuals here, individuals here, sitting here right now, they woke up, they walked downstairs, and they had gifts under their tree. And thanks to anyone in this audience who participated in that as well. We transitioned, the, the, the snow started falling, and we started doing this annual thing called winter survival, where you go out, we give you a sleeping bag, maybe some matches, uh, if you want to bring in a tarp, if you want to bring some little bit of food, and you walk out into the woods, and that's where you spend the night. You don't bring a tent, and you fend for yourself, because we're from Maine, right? We are from Maine. If we can't live in the snow at night, in the winter, we question our Mainehood. And we have many, many students, though, and I'm out there talking to them, I'm like, hey, how, how often do you guys go camping? And I think Nikita, and I could be wrong, or maybe it was someone else, looks at me, oh, I've never been camping before. And I'm like, really? So you just decided to go sleep in the woods in like 10 degree weather just because, so that's pretty awesome. So we did that, and we had a great night, about 15 degrees, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, but a great night for all, and they wake up in the morning, shake off, get a little warm, and then I think they feel good about themselves, and I think they think, hey, I can do this. If my snowmobile broke down, or whatever the case may be, I can make it through the night. So they're learning some basic uh, survival skills. We have the opportunity here in the spring to go to something called the Maine Maritime Leadership Academy, and we'll see photos of that up there. We sent the most students out of any high school in the state in New England, so the most in Maine, and the most in New England. We sent 23 students down there, and they volunteered. They didn't have to do it. Uh, they have the Maine Maritime Midshipmen. They had UMaine ROTC cadets serving as their instructors, and they had a U.S. Marine Corps gunny sergeant. And he was, he was giving them the U.S. Marine Corps gunny sergeant and what they do. And uh, he was actually at the circus. So we recently did the circus as well, and they saw him in civilian attire like Dylan Gray over there, saw him in civilian attire, and he came back down to me all shaking because he saw the gunny sergeant. Hey, hey I just saw the gunny sergeant, and he spoke to me. So they, they will remember that night and oh, those days sleeping on the ship, and we'll see some uh, photos of that. We did the, the Zimmerman Challenge, and some individuals here did that. That is in honor of First Lieutenant Zimmerman. He was from Holton, Maine. He was killed in Afghanistan. So this is an event that he went to UMaine, so they, 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 they do this event, this physical challenge, because he was a physical individual in honor of him, to remember him, to never let his legacy be forgotten. And we took, I believe we had 12 cadets do that, and we come rolling up. This is our second year doing it. And as soon as they see us, they're like, oh, here comes the Army. Here comes Nokomis. We're the only high school that participates in that event. I've heard others talk about it, but they're never there. Our guys are there, and our girls are there. And then we transition into the summit project. We're supposed to go uh, this Tuesday, and we're supposed to climb Little Bigelow Mountain. Looking at the weather forecast right now, that like that four-letter word starts with an S, ends in a W, could be could be uh, could be on the way in that part of Maine. So we will see uh, if we actually do it this this Tuesday, or have to shift it uh, to like Thursday. But we'll be watching the weather. And but what we'll do is 39 stones. So there's been roughly 70 Mainers who have been killed in action since 9-11. So 70 Mainers, and as the principal discussed, everyone has a tribute stone that their family selected. So that their family selected. So on this day, on 6 May in 2006, two Mainers were killed in action. Two Mainers were killed in action. And I don't know, I, I don't have the list memorized off the top of my head, but Staff Sergeant David uh, Vervaca was one of them, 25 years old. He was a UMaine senior. The, the unit got notified of a pending deployment to Iraq in January. He was due to graduate in May. He made the decision, hey, I'm deploying with my unit, months away from graduation at University of Maine. And he was killed with his partner, Staff Sergeant Dale Kelly, 48 years old, from Richmond, Maine, left behind a wife and three kids, three adult children, both killed almost simultaneously when an IED struck their Humvee. It is said that... Uh, Staff Sergeant Vervaca reached up and grabbed the gunner in the turret in his last dying efforts and pulled his gunner, a 19-year-old from Stinson, Maine, back into the, into the vehicle for safety. 
So we want those names, we want th that legacy to never be forgotten. Because if we allow our Mainers who have fallen to be something, nothing more than a name on the wall, it, it's shame on us. So in Dexter, if you have the opportunity, I believe it's the 11th to the 15th, the Vietnam Moving uh, Memorial will be there. So I would encourage you all to go visit that. Very awesome experience to see all those names. But here in Maine, they made a decision, hey, let's never let our Mainers be forgotten. Let's remember their names. Let's remember what they did and keep their legacy alive. So we'll plan on doing that uh, this Tuesday. And when we get up to the summit of Little Bigelow, everyone steps forward. We make a ring. And everyone steps forward and says, hey, I carried the soul of Sergeant David Baraka. And they tell the story. And everyone listens. It's like the one time me and the Sergeant Major talk about that you can have like 30 or 40 high school kids and no one's talking. And they're all listening. And they're all paying attention. Because they get it on the summit. And then when you get back down, they got to get on this, uh, the Summit Project website on the blog. And you have to write a letter, a reflection letter, about what it meant to learn about that individual, what it meant to carry his stone on a tribute trek. And that is responded to quite frequently uh, by the parents or the sons or the daughters or the wives of the Mainers who are no longer with us today. So it's an awesome experience, the Summit Project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this, uh, like this five-minute uh, video of all the images from this year, and I'll just kind of be talking over it. And if it's okay with you guys, we're going to listen to some ACDC. So we're going to listen to some Thunderstruck, if it's okay. And, uh, and we'll go ahead. So could I have some uh, music, please? So this is the color guard at last year's uh, ball. We did do a uh, tandem kayak trip with the, all the freshmen. Freshmen typically communicate with Snapchat and text. So now you stick two on a canoe and they actually have to talk to each other. It's hard to go upstream when one guy's paddling one way and the other guy's paddling the other. We did a battalion inspection where the University of Maine Army officer and NCO come down and inspect your cadets, asking them questions checking the wear and appearance of their uniform. Great, great practice for a job interview. They feel proud of the uniforms. They certainly feel proud if they're getting the questions answered right. This is the debrief. This is at the Maine Maritime Academy. So. Schools from all over New England attended, from different services. So you had Navy, Air Force, some Coast Guard cadets. Our, our in, ours are in the gray uniform, the PT uniform. Started off with a 0500 wake up, duffel bag drag, across the dock getting yelled at by a gunny sergeant, and then some physical training. They did go into the pool and do some survival skills where you get into their life raft being taught by the uh, mariners from MMA. This is a multi-million dollar ship simulator where Maine Maritimers learn how to drive a ship. Our cadets actually won this competition. So they defeated all other schools and they did the best job of navigating their ship through rough seas. They went to a marine biology lab, four-way tug, tug of war competition. Again, we dominated the tug of war, four-way, and they had a uh, device in the center, so you're pulling from four different directions. This is the ship they slept on, lining up for chow. This is inside their dining facility at the college. All this was free. All you had to do was step forward and say, hey, I want to go. Make your memories. Take advantage of the opportunities. This is at the Zimmerman Challenge. That's James Boyd, Colby Prosser, Meg Whitten, Leah Herrick. Many of, some of these are at the band trip in DC right now. 
pushing through the mud. It was about 45 and rain. It was cold. We do have a marksmanship team. This is some photos of that, shooting air rifles. This is the drill team. This is at UMaine in the field house. This is some winter survival photos. They did a fire starting competition. Who could boil water the fastest? The girls won, or one of the girls teams won. I think Josie Ward. I think Alexis, perhaps. So we had UMaine college students. This is the POW MIA vigil here in front of the school. It's scuba diving. Twice, twice a year we go scuba diving, free of charge. Maine Maritime takes care of us. Actual scuba diving, not just like a snorkel. This is a JCLC, a summer camp. This is part of the DC tour. Flag folding ceremonies at the middle school. We have a Raiders team. This is the 9-11 climb. You can see the uh, flag pole that Colby's carrying on his back. And you see them starting to raise the flag. We do participate in the unified basketball. And this is a couple photos from the summit as part of Summit Project. So there's tremendous opportunity for your students, your cadets, to get involved in any of these programs and any of these activities. Just step forward and make your memories. Make your memories. So when you leave high school, no offense, Miss Olson, but you're probably not going to remember, there I was in English class. There I was. Maybe you will. Maybe you will. But maybe you'll remember, hey, that last play I did for the drama club. Maybe you'll remember that band performance or that trip with the band down in Washington, D.C. Or maybe you'll remember an event like one of these, where you truly are involved, you truly are passionate about what you're doing, and you feel like you're making a difference. You feel like you're making a difference. So I encourage you to all get involved. Uh, get involved and have fun. Because this is the best time of your life. This is the best time of your life, so celebrate it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transition to the uh, individual awards portion. And I'll turn it over to Sergeant Major. All right, it's an Nokomis tradition to promote the current cadet battalion commander to a cadet colonel in order to make way for the underclassmen to serve as the leadership of the cadet corps. Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Kaylee Mackey is hereby promoted to cadet colonel to serve in the position of commandant of cadets. Would the parents of cadet Mackey please come forward to pin the rank on their daughter?
It is another Warrior Nation tradition to present sabers to the outgoing Cadet Battalion Commander and Cadet Battalion Command Sergeant Major in recognition of their leadership over the past year. The first award is the Commander's Award, selected by the Cadet Battalion Commander. The following cadets will receive the Commander's Award based on their leadership performance over the past year. Could Cadet Alyssa Ellis please step forward? <laughs> Cadet Justin Emery. and Cadet Zach Ellis. <laughs> Cadet Megan Witten was the other recipient. However, she's on a trip down to DC at the moment. <clears throat> the Superior Cadet Awards presented cadets with exceptional academic performance and who demonstrated tremendous potential for future leadership positions as the outstanding cadet in the respective class. Presenting these awards is Ms. Mary Netto, Principal of the Warrior Nation. The Let One recipient is Cadet Josh Grozik. The Let Two cadet is Alyssa Ellis. The LAT 3 recipient is Cadet Aubrey Culver. And the LAT 4 recipient is Cadet Kaylee Mackey. The next award is for maintaining the highest grade point average by light level. The highest academics for that one with a GPA average of 3.76 was to Megan Witten, but once again, she's not here. Uh, the highest academics for let two with a GPA average of 3.50 is Cadet Alyssa Ellis. The highest academics for LET3 with a GPA average of 2.60 is Cadet Dalton Marshall.
And the highest average for let four, the GPA average of 3.20 is Cadet Taylor Harris. That's it for you after this one. Sorry. The following group of cadets will receive academic wreaths for achieving honor roll or higher. This first group achieved high honors. Please come up to accept your wreath after your name is read. Colby Watson, Austin Archer, Dalton Marshall, James Boyd, Alyssa Ellis, Ashley Larry, Sam Peacock, Abby Borsma, Jay Brooks, Mike Fletcher, Josh Grozick, Leah Herrick, Nick Lincoln, Lorena Stevens, Calvin Peck. Also, the next group of cadets achieved honors. Please come up to accept your wreath after your name is read. Bruce Gallison, Charles Pinkerton, Arby Culver, Anastasia Allen, Seth Woodard, Cameron Bagley, Bo Briggs, Sam Donaldson, Cade Kreider, Jacob Rouser. I promise. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> The Excellent Staff Performance Ribbon is to be awarded to cadets who have served on the Warrior Battalion staff and displayed motivation and dedication in their position. The following cadets are receiving this award. Alyssa Ellis, Aiden Harding, Cassie Thayer, Charles Pinkerton, Abby Borsma, Anastasia Allen, Norena Stevens, Camden Perkins, Nikita Robbins, Connor Verault, and Michael Fletcher. The Daughters of the American Revolution Award. This cadet must be in the top 25% of GRHC academic subjects. They must demonstrate qualities of loyalty and patriotism and leadership ability. Presenting the award is Colonel Clark. The award is presented to Cadet Anastasia Allen.
Daughters of the Founders and Patriots of, of America Award. This award is presented to a worthy cadet for demonstrating dependability and solid character, thus exemplifying the high ideals and principles which motivated and sustained our patriot ancestors. The award consists of a gold pendant. The award goes to Cadet Abigail Borsma. The Sons of the American Revolution Award for Outstanding Service to the JRHC Program, thus exemplifying the high ideals and principles which motivate and sustain our patriot ancestors. This award is presented by Colonel Clark and goes to Cadet Calvin Peck. The Southern Maine Chapter Retired Officers Award is presented to a cadet who has demonstrated leadership growth and outstanding contributions in advance in Jared C. program. Presenting the award for the Southern Maine Chapter Retired Officers is Colonel Clark, and the award goes to Cadet Command Sergeant Major Zach Ellis. Reserve Officer Association Awards presented for demonstrating outstanding dedication to citizenship, knowledge of civic responsibility, self-discipline, and a sound work ethic. The award goes to Cadet Nikita Robbins. The Purple Heart National Leadership Award is presented to a cadet for exceptional leadership while enrolled in JRTC. This award goes to Cadet Alyssa Ellis. The Veterans of Foreign Wars, Wars Award. This cadet must be enrolled in good standing militarily and has demonstrated concentrated effort in Jared C. subject matter. Presenting the award on behalf of the Newport Veterans is Ms. Kim Lander. The Bronze Award goes to Cadet Jen Willette. Wars Award. This cadet must be enrolled in good standing militarily and has demonstrated concentrated effort in JRC subject matter. Presenting the award on behalf of the Newport Veterans is Ms. Kim Lander. <laughs> the 
The bronze award goes to Cadet Jen Willett. The Silver Award goes to Cadet Sam Peacock. American Legion Wharf Military Excellence presented to one cadet in different let levels who are in the top 25% of their class in Jared C. and demonstrated outstanding qualities in leadership, discipline, character, and citizenship. Presenting these awards is Ms. Kim Lander for the American Legion Post 105 in Newport. And the bronze award goes to cadet Andrew Haining. Silver Award goes to Cadet Justin Emery. And the gold award goes to Cadet Taylor Harris. The Veterans Leadership Bowl. The Veterans Leadership Bowl is presented to the cadet who has shown tremendous growth in leadership and demonstrated resilience in the face of adversity. This award goes to Cadet Command Sergeant Major Zach Ellis. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gary Braley from the Newport American Legion is taking it home. The American Legion Community Service Awards presented to the cadet who demonstrates exceptional planning, organization, and executing community service events for the local community and border across the state of Maine. The award goes to Cadet Taylor Harris.
In the spirit of community service, the fallen cadets are presented a commendation ribbon for their hard work and dedication while working all three days in support of the Shriner Circus. Their efforts help raise over $38,000 for the Shriner's efforts to provide critical medical care for children in need. Would the fallen cadets please step forward? Colby Prosser, Caleb Carroll, Josetta Ward, Nikita Robbins, Xavier Goodine, Dylan Gray. And if there's any more out there we didn't get, please come forward. The American Legion Award for Scholastic Excellence is presented to one cadet in the different let levels. This cadet must be in the top 25% of his or her JRC class. Presenting these awards is Mr. David Bolstridge from the Corinna American Legion. The Bronze Award goes to Cadet Alyssa Ellis. The Silver Award goes to Cadet Aubrey Culver. And the gold award goes to Cadet Kaylee Mackey. The American Veterans JRC Recognition Award for diligence in the discharge of duties and the willingness to serve both God and country for the mutual benefit of all. Presenting this award is Mr. James Laughlin of the American Vets in Maine. And the award goes to Cadet Caleb Carroll. The Military Order of the World Wars of JRTC Award of Merit is presented to the cadet in good standing in all JRTC and scholastics within all other courses. They also demonstrate a strong desire to serve their country. Presenting the award for the Military Order of World Wars is Captain Alan Johnson. And the award goes to Cadet Casty Thayer.
The National Sojourners Award. This award is presented to a cadet who is in the top 25% of the class and has encouraged and demonstrated the American ideals of perseverance and hard work by deed or, or conduct or both, and also has demonstrated potential for outstanding leadership. Presenting this award is Chief Bowden, and the award goes to Cadet Seth Woodard. <laughs> Colonel Clark. And the award goes to Cadet Jay Brooks. The Senior Army Instructor Award for Leadership. This award is presented to cadets at different LET levels who demonstrate leadership attributes above the level of their peers. The LET II recipient is Cadet James Boyd. The LET three recipient is Cadet Dalton Marshall. And the LET four recipient is Cadet Taylor Harris.
At this time, the battalion change of command will occur. The passing of the guide on is a time-honored tradition signifying the change of responsibility associated with command. In this ceremony, the battalion command sergeant major representing the backbone of the backbone of the battalion because you need guys in step four. In this ceremony, a battalion command sergeant major representing the backbone of the battalion hands the unit colors to the outgoing commander. The outgoing commander then passes the guide on to the senior army instructor, signifying the return of the responsibility of which she was entrusted upon assuming command. The senior army instructor then passes the guide on to the incoming commander, thus demonstrating his confidence in the commander's ability to handle the responsibility of command. Attention to orders. By authority of Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Alyssa Ellis, the undersigned assumes command of the Nokomis Cadet Corps, effective 6 May 2017. Signed, Alyssa Ellis, Cadet, Lieutenant Colonel. The commander now passes the colors back to the command sergeant major, signifying the trust and confidence in the Corps of the non-commissioned officers. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior Army instructor, Colonel Clark. So again, uh, thank you all for attending this awesome ceremony tonight. Some great individual uh, awards, some great group effort collectively. We're here to uh, say farewell to our seniors. We're going to say farewell to our seniors tonight as they, as they march off to uh, bigger and better things. So like two mornings ago, I was in here with uh, Butch and Charlie and we're setting up this, uh, like the banner over there. And that's historically shown or displayed behind graduation night. So we were kind of raising it up and uh, messing with it. And I, and I turn around as we're kind of looking at it, and I turn around and there's a senior standing like right in the center court, mid court, with her arms at her side, her mouth wide open. And she's like, oh my God, it's time. It's time to leave. And she was in shock. I was like, are you okay? It's time. So it is time for the seniors to, uh, to move on and do bigger and better things. We thank you, Kaylee, for all your leadership uh, over the course of the year. We wish you uh, the greatest as she's actually transitioning and uh, going to enlist in the Army. And she's going to do great things and serve, serve our nation. And uh, we will sleep better at night knowing there's individuals like you serving in our military. And we look forward to uh, Alyssa. So Kaylee's raised the bar, and I only ask Al Alyssa to continue to raise the bar. Take, take, take every challenge, take it, face it head on, and uh, we look forward to everything you're going to bring to this organization. So thank you again. Jersey C has built my foundation for success. I want to thank all the people who has pushed me to get this far. As I leave behind all the knowledge I know, I hope you will have a very successful next year. One thing to remember is what you put into the Corps is what you get out of it. You all should be very proud of your accomplishments this year. Good luck and have a great year. Um, I'd like to thank my family for coming to support me and my parents who came up and pinned me. Thanks, Dad, for putting it sideways. Um, I'd like to thank Zachary. I'm going to miss you when you go to basic, and I'll mention Allison, too, because she'll say something about it later if I don't. Um, I think I have great leadership coming in next year, and we're going to continue to improve this program. <laughs> thank you all for coming out tonight. <laughs> All right, if you could, uh, just give us a second while the color guard team uh, gets ready.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for retiring of the colors. On behalf of the battalion commander, this concludes the formal portion of this evening's event. Please take a moment to allow the graduating class to form a receiving line and then congratulate them on their service. Thanks for coming out, folks. <laughs>